Well, welcome everyone. My name is John Defonso. I'm the Director of Client Relations here at Manami. Welcome to the Hypothesis webinar. Uh, we're really excited to have the folks from uh, Hypothesis on this call with us and uh, showing, uh, showcasing their fabulous uh, annotation tool for Moodle. For those who don't know what uh, Manami is, uh, we are a uh, certified Moodle partner or a certified Moodle workplace partner and a certified uh, Platinum Totor partner. So we essentially offer three open source LMSs to our clientele. Um, and we deploy each and every one of our clients uh, instance of Totor or Moodle Workplace or Moodle itself on uh, Amazon AWS uh, cloud infrastructure. So um, just kind of click through a couple slides here. In addition to our uh, hosting and support services, which are really the pillars of what we do here, uh, we provide a range of other services for our clients who are generally coming to us from self-hosted environments, or maybe you're hosted with another uh, another hosting provider. Uh, we provide uh, a full service array of, uh, of services here, everything from integration. A lot of times our clients want to take Moodle or Work, Workplace or Totora and integrate it or tie it into other external ERP or student information systems. Sometimes they want to take Moodle and uh, tie in some e-commerce plugins. Uh, or tie or stand Moodle, uh, one of these open source systems up against your preferred authentication. Uh, we also provide a range of different uh, complementary plugins. Uh, one that we're going to be looking at today, obviously, is our partner with Hypothesis. We're very excited about that. We also provide a very uh, highly tailored um, onboarding and training too. So when new clients come aboard with us, complementary um, Moodle migration, and then we'll take you through a formal uh, onboarding in the in the sense of training, uh, integration, or tying your system up against uh, any single sign-on preferences you may have. So that's a little bit about what we do. Um, again, we're really excited to have every once in a while we we come across uh, one of these complementary um, providers out there that can really drive different types of learning experiences within Moodle. Um, and mm -hmm. Hypothesis is one of these. So we're really excited to, to be partnered up with uh, with with this firm. And I'm going to turn it over to, to Jeremy Dean, who's going to be leading this, this session at this point. Welcome to this uh, Munami sponsored webinar on Hypothesis and Moodle. I'm Jeremy Dean. I'm the Director of Education at Hypothesis. Uh, we're going to be talking today about the Hypothesis Collaborative Annotation Tool uh, and its LTI integration in the Moodle LMS. A uh, big thank you to John and Kelly at Munami for the opportunity to share uh, our tool with, the, with their community and with the Moodle community more broadly. Um, this deck does have some links in it that might be useful to you later in implementation, so you can go ahead and grab it and have access to it uh, for, um, for posterity. The bit.ly link is hype in move. This is a little bit of the plan. I'm not going to talk for too long. I want to uh, leave a lot of time for discussion and for questions. Um, for those that are excited about collaborative annotation, I, I really want to be able to, to talk today, uh, have the initial conversation today about how you can best leverage the technology for, for your goals. Um, but I will, uh, you know, talk a little bit about the hypothesis organization, annotation as a technology, uh, hypothesis for teaching and learning, or predominantly an education tool. But if there are folks from outside the education space, that this technology really has applications across a, a, a wide range of professions and applications. Uh, we'll look at hypothesis in Moodle. I'll talk about some coming features, um, and I'll talk about our, our hypothesis uh, pilot program. So uh, like Moodle, a Hypothesis is open source, um, and we also have long advocated for open standards for web annotation. Uh, we really, our openness is at our core, and that's why I think it's such a great fit to be working with Munami uh, and with Moodle. Um, this is the team. I always like to give them a shout out, a glimpse of the folks behind the tool. Um, they're an amazing group of folks that are really dedicated to creating a transformative tool for education and beyond. Uh, I think my colleague Nate may be somewhere in the uh, here, and also my colleague Butch. So you may may see them in the chat. <clears throat> so again, I'm going to be talking about the education context largely, um, but I want you to keep in mind that this basic functionality of collaborative annotation, of web annotation, of being able to write in the margins of websites uh, and other digital documents, uh, really has value across a, a wide range of verticals. So that if you're if you're doing uh, you know if you're at a, a in a corporation that has documents that you're sharing or a law firm where you're sharing documents, 
uh, this tool is, is also for you, even though it's going to be talking about most of the educational context. So when I taught high school, my background is education. I'm, I'm trained as an English professor. When I taught high school and college English, I would hand out this poem at the beginning of every term. It's Billy Collins. It's from, uh, Billy Collins' Ode to Annotation called Marginalia. And he writes there, we have all seized the white perimeter as our own and reached for a pen, if only to show we did not just laze in an armchair turning pages, we pressed a thought into the wayside, planted an oppression along the verge. I handed this out on the first day because I wanted to make a point of encouraging students to write in the margins of their books because I believed that annotation was possibly the most critical practice that would influence their performance in other aspects of my courses, their uh, class participation, their test taking, their paper writing, everything. I think there's perhaps nothing more essential to learning than reading, and there's nothing more essential to, to reading than annotation. So it's been around for a while. Scholars, students, everyday readers have been annotating books, writing in the margins since really the invention of the book itself. Uh, it makes us better readers, more attentive, more understanding, more active, more critical. But as books move online, uh, we lose the ability, and in other documents move online, we use the ability to practice this essential learning skill. So this is the vision for annotation online that Hypothesis has built. Uh, multiple layers of annotation, social or private annotation, on top of any website, article, ebook, e document, or piece of multimedia. So like in traditional annotation, I can take personal notes on the margins of a, web, a website or any, or any electronic document. I can also create a group with my colleagues. Say if I'm in education, it might be some of the colleagues in my department who were reading an article related to our field uh, or uh, all reading together uh, something that we're, uh, an article that we're teaching together and we want to talk about the teaching of that article. Um, I can then have private groups for my course or my courses across multiple semesters. Uh, and then there can also be public layers uh, of annotation. So let me talk a little bit about what we've seen in terms of annotation in teaching and learning. The first idea is that hypothesis or collaborative annotation makes reading active. Now, this is this is nothing new. This is what I was always talking about when I told my students to write uh, in their books. But it's become all the more important as reading moves online and it's all the more easier for students to become distracted. Uh, and studies have shown that students are not um, retaining as much when they read online. They're not as engaged as much. They skim a lot. And annotation has also been shown in the research to counteract that trend reinstilling and reinvigorating critical reading practices in the digital age. But one of the great affordances uh, as annotation moves online and we have this wonderful network space that we know as, as the web is that it can become social. So we're not reading the text alone anymore. If we're confused, we can ask for help. We have conversations that help us uh, more deeply engage and extend the course material. Uh, and I can't, I can't say it better than this student at uh, Plymouth State who wrote a, a blog post about her experience using a hypothesis in class. She writes, hypothesis is my literary Facebook. When I'm reading, I sometimes wonder, does anyone actually understand this? Am I crazy? With this brilliant tool, I know I'm not alone. And then finally, hypothesis or web annotation makes reading visible. Um, I, as I said, I used to encourage my students to read, but I never checked on that, right? I never, or I encouraged them to read, obviously, but I also encouraged them to annotate. Um, and I never checked on that. I never know if, if I never knew if they did it. I never knew uh, if they did it well. Um, but now I can see all that work because the annotation is shared, and I can see their notes. I can see that they have read, and I can also see how they've read. I, I can see if they're confused. I can see if they're inspired, and I can guide or nurture. Uh, where necessary because of that presence. So it's got some uh, great pedagogical benef benefits. As I said, active deep reading, uh, it's a deeply collaborative tool. So even aside from the sort of close deep reading, this is a tool that really brings folks together in, a, in an authentic social way. Um, and we hear all the time that, you know, that students who are annotating together regularly as part of a class, their other group projects are going are just go, go better as a result. They're sort of primed for the collaboration and now collaborative knowledge building that, uh, that they have been doing in, in, in annotation. Um, and one of the really neat things about uh, 
hypothesis is that all your annotations in a course, all your annotations across documents, all your annotations across courses, all your annotations beyond, a, beyond your school uh, are all collected together in a archive of, or a portfolio of your content that you can uh, mine whenever necessary. You're obviously gonna mine that maybe at the end of a, a course to write a paper, um, but you can also go back to your annotations from previous courses uh, in a new course or, you know, as I did for many years, I don't think I still have them in my parents' closet, but I kept all my notes from my college courses for, for way too long. Um, but this is an easy, easier way to do that than having a stack of notebooks in, your, uh, in the closet back, uh, back home. And one of the really neat things about Hypothesis is that um, it's, it's not just an education technology. As I said, it's useful in so many other professions. So somebody might be using, uh, introduced a Hypothesis through formal education in, in the course of study at, at a college or university or a high school, um, but then be able to find use, personal use for it outside of, of formal education, but also professional use. Uh, as collaborative annotation becomes part of more part of the every, everyday practice of life on the internet and, and certain professions that are reading documents and reading documents collaboratively and, and reading documents in a way that requires deep analysis or that have dense language that needs unpacking, um, this type of technology will be used beyond, uh, beyond the classroom. So Hypothesis in, in Moodle. Um, our Hypothesis LTI app uh, allows for, uh, enables single sign-on so that when it's activated on a document inside of Moodle, students don't need to create accounts, they don't need to log into those accounts, they don't need to join a group, a private group for the course is automatically provisioned for them. Um, so they really can get down to uh, the important work of social reading with, with colleagues. So when Hypothesis is active on a, on a text, if you select text, and I'll show you this in a second, uh, if you highlight text, you'll be given the option to, to highlight, to, to annotate that text. Um, you can reply to existing annotations. So one way to think about collaborative annotation with Hypothesis as a, is a replacement to the traditional discussion forum. I know that when I first used Moodle or I first used Blackboard in my teaching, aside from the rostering and, and some of the other really managerial aspects of the LMS, the thing I really used was a discussion forum. Uh, I was never in love with them, but I loved the idea of having students you know, engage with a question before class um, so that they were a little more thoughtful and prepared when they, when they did come to class. And you can think of hypothesis as sort of the evolution of the discussion forum, taking that discussion from a separate tab uh, in front of the student to the actual, you know, reading assignment to the actual course material and allowing them to engage, I think, more, more authentically, right? It's not always going to be teacher prompt, student, 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 student response. A student could generate a discussion thread, uh, you know, on their own uh, in, a line of inquiry in the margin of a text using hypothesis. Um, you can annotate together in private groups. I've mentioned that. And then we've got some really cool uh, features coming uh, specific for education. And in the Q&A, again, if there are folks here who are not in the education space, there's lots to be said about how this tool can get used um, in other areas as well. But we are building out gradebook integration. That's what we're doing right now. So this will allow uh, annotation sets from a, from a reading. If we, on this webinar, we're all collaborative annotating a text and then John, the professor, wanted to really zoom in on, on Jeremy's contributions, our gradebook integration will allow him to do that, um, to assess my annotations uh, if, if he chose as a teacher, but also to give me private feedback on my practice. How was I reading? How was I analyzing? How was I interacting and collaborating with my classmates? Uh, after that, our focus is, is gonna be on creating sections or groups within LMS uh, courses. So right now there's a one-to-one -one relationship between course uh, roster and uh, hypothesis group, but for a 300 person physics class that can create for a quite a noisy annotation of, uh, of Einstein's uh, writings. And so the idea, you know, just as in a large lecture course at a university, you'd split that into sections of 15 or 20 or something like that. And we'll be able to do that with groups in, in the LMS as well. Um, we need to build out annotation portfolios that have export capabilities so that students can really view and, and, and uh, extract their annotations from across a course or from across courses in different ways. And then finally, a big emphasis for us is gonna be on learning analytics. You know, reading, as I said, is sort of one of the most fundamental pieces of learning in, in, in most disciplines. 
Um, and so annotation, highlighting an annotation really gives us a window into how students are performing on this most fundamental activity. Um, and so we think there's a lot to, to learn there and we're working to uh, surface that data to students and to teachers and to institutions and uh, specifically to surf it in, service it in ways like through the caliper um, standard format so that it can be correlated with uh, more easily ingested and correlated with other um, other formats other other data sets so uh, let's look at hypothesis in Moodle let me just confirm that my screen has changed now to be showing a Moodle course yep it is thanks John um, cool so I'm in my course poetry 101 I've got uh, some different sections here Massachusetts poets uh, section of winter poems, a section just on John Ashbery. I can go into the winter poems section. And basically what the hypothesis app allows you to do, if it responds, we were just there, weren't we? Oh, there we go. Um, it allows me to create annotatable, annotated and annotatable readings. So uh, this is an hypothesis enabled reading. It's created from a website from poetryfoundation.org. It's a Mary Oliver poem. Um, and it has a couple student annotations on top of it already. Um, so this is the hypothesis sidebar here. Otherwise, this looks like the original text as it does on the, on, on the web. Um, but this is the annotation pane. I can, as I showed you, close it. I can hide the annotations if I don't, if I want to read the poem without those highlights. I can create a page note, which is an annotation that's sort of, that's unattached to specific text within the document. Great place to put a head note or a prompt if you're using this in education. Um, but uh, mostly this is about, you know, word by word, phrase by phrase annotation. So um, you can see that when I select text, I can, I'm given the option of highlighting, which is private, or annotating, which can be public or private. I have the option of either making that a personal note or share it with my class. And I can type something interesting in the uh, annotation pane. I've got the ability to add tags. Uh, which can be a really cool thing pedagogically um, and also for organizing those portfolios organizing the archive of annotations that accrue over time in a course or in individuals reading um, and i have these rich text formatting options here so i can uh, do things like italicize or do pull quotes add links which is a, a neat feature or images i can also drop in youtube videos um, and even use math language uh, latex math, math language so lots of cool functionality to make these annotations really rich media objects um, rather than just uh, you know marginal notes as, as we've known them to be scribbles in, in, the, in, the, in the white you know sides of the page these can be you know with images and video quite rich uh, you know documents of of reading and thinking um, so going back to uh, the here I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through the process of adding a annotate uh, hypothesis enabled reading let me turn editing on and I'll go ahead and add an activity or resource. It's an external tool. And give it a name. Hypothesis has been installed for me by the LMS administrator in this case. So I select it. I don't have to enter the key in secret. All that stuff was done previously. I'm going to save and display and then the final step before it's ready for students to annotate or others to annotate um, is to choose my document. And right now I have two choices. I can go and grab something from the web uh, or I can go and uh, authorize a, 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 G, a Google account um, and grab something from my Google Drive or upload something in the process. So I could right now go ahead and upload uh, something from my desktop. Um, or I can grab something that's already in my uh, in my Google Drive, like this PDF here. And there it is, uh, PDF from a you know academic journal. It looks like an academic book, and I can select text on that as I did before, and create annotations. So that's the demo. Again, the next thing we're working on is the ability to then look at these annotations 
um, for a teacher to look at these annotations in a sort of grading view. Um, so you can imagine if, if, the, if things were really busy on top of Mary Oliver's white eyes with uh, you know, 20, 20 students annotating here right now, it's just Moodle student. Um, but if there are 20 students here, the gradebook view would allow me to isolate Moodle students' uh, contributions um, and enter a grade uh, for their contributions. But uh, you know, these an annotation activities don't need to be graded. They can just be a way to turn on this ability to write in the margins uh, in the digital text for your courses um, without uh, making it part of a formal assessment. I, I think I'll stop there and maybe see if there's questions in the chat or John or yeah, I don't know how question, you want to. One question that just came up just uh, was from uh, someone that wanted to know if uh, what, a PDF that's stored in the Moodle repository could be used. And I. I personally don't, can't see why it couldn't be, but I'll let you go. Yeah, great question. Um, I think there might be workarounds to do that now. Um, so, but the next, one of the next steps for, for our development is going, because we have that for Canvas right now, uh, direct link where, let me just go back really quickly and show you the options. Um, I'll add an activity or resource again, sorry for this, but we're gonna line up the, the ability to grab from Moodle resources um, as a third option. In the in the screen that I showed you before, um, back there, so it's easier to see uh, here where you're configuring the reading. There could be a third option that says, uh, you know, select from Moodle resources. I don't know exactly how Moodle resources now works, but if you have a PDF in Moodle resources and you can go to your Moodle resources and uh, get a, 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 you know, a URL for that PDF that Moodle can generate, then you could pop that here in the URL entry. Uh, so that would be an additional step um, for now to do what, what the, the, uh, the person asked, but eventually we'll have that taken care of by a third option here that will say, grab something from the Moodle resources, and then it will open up something like the Google Drive where you can see, uh, see the files in the Moodle resources. So I see a question uh, about articles uh, licensed to a college but behind a wall. So this URL here has to be a public URL. It can't be something that you log into. So a permalink at a library won't work here. So the workflow now, and I'll let you decide, institutions decide differently about whether uh, this is fair use or not, but the workflow now would be to download the PDF from JSTOR or whatever the library uh, resource is. Um, and then upload it uh, to Google Drive here. Um, I know that, that some might be concerned about copyright issues there, some, some might not. I'm not a copyright lawyer. Certainly we do see that happening quite a bit. Um, we are working directly with JSTOR, ProQuest, EBSCO, and others. So again, in the future, there may be a lot more options here. You may have uh, you know, the two you see here, select from Moodle resources, then there may be a JSTOR button, or an EBSCO button, or Pro, ProQuest button. And, that would allow us to, again, further ease the ability to grab something from those repositories. A couple more coming um, just a second here. Sure, I see some of them. I don't know if I... Oh, okay, I didn't know if you were seeing some of those questions. Okay. Yeah, I see if, uh, attendee eight. So attendee eight, to answer your question, are there instructions to set up and operate your own hypothesis service for your K-12 district, meaning you'd want to host your own servers and, 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 and host the, and, and, and store the annotations yourselves. Um, there are not great instructions for that, to be honest. You know, part of our, um, I mean, it's possible. We're open source um, and people have done it. Uh, it's not well-trod territory. We also think of ourselves as sort of the experts in this business and constantly putting out really wonderful features that your, uh, you know, students and teachers would, would benefit from. Um, so we right now are sort of operating a hosted service in that regard. Um, but in the future, it will be easier to uh, stand up your own hypothesis service. But right now, I, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, not for not for a K-12 district mm -hmm. especially. So, so I just need to clarify something. There was a, a question that was asked for if there was a cost associated with adding the LTI to an existing Moodle site. And there is no cost on our side to add the, the LTI, but 
um, I'm sure Jeremy can address any costs associated with running the hypothesis as, as a as a as an applicate as a as a um, add-on to the sure. yeah sure so we have this web-based app and this is again for those that are on education and and really for those that are you can go and get a hypothesis account for free all you need is an email address you can go and get one of our browser extensions and annotate on the web uh, it's pretty cool stuff even if you're not a teacher or even if you want to use it for your own edification I mean I've sort of become obsessed with uh you know, just annotating my reading and, and sharing it. I mean, it's a little like Twitter, but grounded more in um, in substance in a sense. Um, so I've made it part of my, you know, professional and personal way of interacting with the, the digital world. Um, and that is all free. And for many years, teachers would leverage that. They would um, get the browser extension themselves, get accounts, create private groups, um, tell their students to, to sign up for a hypothesis account to get the browser extension and then stop using Safari and start using uh, Chrome and then manually join the private group and go through all that onboarding process. And basically the LMS eliminates that entire onboarding process in addition to adding some very specific education, uh, edu you know, educational features like gradebook integration and other things that um, is going to cost money long term. So the way that we're working right now mm -hmm. is that, um, uh, and I'm sure that the, the, the person from the from the, the, the secondary or the K through 12 district can appreciate that uh, it's unsustainable obviously to tell your faculty and staff and to tell their students to go sign up for a third party account not to mention having privacy concerns around all that um, it's just you know untenable to do that beyond the sort of most pioneering of educators that are willing to do that with a, a new a sort of tool like ours but the LMS product the way it works is that it's free to download uh, free to install um, and test I think the limit is, you know, one live course, 50 students, although we're not super strict about that. We want people to be able to test it. Those of you that are running LMSs or, or working with Munami to run your LMS, you know there's security issues around adding third-party apps. And so you need to be able to test the app out and, and see that it works as I've, I've, as I've suggested it does here. Um, maybe share it with some faculty to see if it's of interest. Maybe try it out in a course uh, to see if it, you know, what the results are. Um, but and and beyond that sort of free testing and, and early usage uh, we have a pilot program it's very simple uh, setup uh, where we ask a school to have three instructors test out the app for for a term um, very soon once we get uh, Moodle especially up to par that's going to be a paid pilot 2k a school to for for a term to to test it out with our full you know tier uh, tier one technical support and pedagogical support um, and then beyond the, the pilot where we have, you know, models for institutional licensing based on, on, on seats and it's not, it's not all or one. You can have a, you know, smaller uh, set of uh, student seats for the tool um, or you can have a, a site license. Um, one thing to be said here is that I think, and again, I'm an, I'm an English teacher, so this is a little bit of my bias, but um, I think this is a really great tool for engaging students in, uh, in their reading, making sure that they have read, seeing how they've read, helping them read, having them help each other through readings. Um, but really that's just the beginning of the value that we think we're gonna be adding for education. You have to imagine that your faculty might be using this to collaborate on their teaching and their professional development. Students, like I said, we're working with JSTOR, EBSCO, ProQuest, and other uh, publishers and, and aggregators. And then you know, students would be able to take that same note-taking um, tool over to library resources and elsewhere. So this is really just the beginning of a, of a much bigger thing we think we're going to offer in the education uh, space, as well as the ability for you know, those students to, like I said, store those notes uh, well beyond a class or, or even a school. <clears throat> yeah, John, did you want to? No, I was going to say a few more questions have uh, come in here. Um, mentioned that there will be that this will be useful across multiple courses and across multiple semesters. When could we expect that functionality? So right now you can. So for example, um, you know, if you if you install it in a course and uh, students use it in that course, um, their same account. If another teacher activated on on the readings in the course in the next term, um, they they would be using the same uh, hypothesis LMS generated account. So it's all. It's linked to their identity within the LMS, um, and you know once you've once you've licensed it for your school, it could be installed in every course, um, and students would be using the same account through all all those courses. Um, does that answer that question? 
Into it, yep. There are a couple others that are coming in. Are you seeing some of the, the, the questions, streams, or do you need me to repeat them to you? I need you to repeat them. I'm only seeing some of them. I didn't see the last one, for example. Okay, one was quite, quite a pricing for around 4,000 students, if you want to address that. And then um, one question was around, do the documents need to be OCR to be annotated? Yes, the documents do need to be OCR. Uh, for better or worse, Hypothesis is very uh, library-like, librarian-like. We love library librarians in, uh, in the way that we built our tool so that when you're selecting text in a in an HTML text or a PDF, you are really selecting that text. And in terms of your portfolio or your archive of annotations, your commentary is specifically attached to a set of words, uh, letters and words that is very specific. It's not like some other annotation tools where you're grabbing an area and, you know, mm. years from now, the fact that you grab that area is not that meaningful. It's just a, a yellow box, right? Um, but this is really about the actual language and the document, a tight connection between them. Obviously, that archive is something that will be useful if you're writing a paper from those notes, then you're actually grabbing the referent plus your annotation as a, as a, as the beginning of your ability to, to make something of your annotation. So it does need to be OCR'd um, and the quality of the OCR does, uh, does affect the experience, you know? So um, a, a really poorly OCR text is not gonna have the same crispness um, or same accuracy, say, of the, when the referent is displayed um, in the sidebar above a comment. Um, it might be, you know, strung together less, um, less elegantly. Uh, I'm not going to go into uh, pricing specifics on on the call, but I'm I'm happy to chat with uh, with individual institutions about that. We're really very early days with this. We just launched this app in December um, and uh, are just piloting right now. So um, we haven't. You know, we're we're in a conversation with our early pilot partners about what's a fair uh, price for for them. What makes sense as a pricing model for them but also what helps bring us sustainability. As I mentioned before, we have a much larger mission than you know, bringing an ed tech tool to market. We want people to be able to use this annotation functionality in their daily lives, and that part is free. Um, and we're a nonprofit, so we're you know, just trying to get some sustainability as we've built out these, uh, these education features. But um, let's, uh, let's talk uh, privately about uh, what, what makes sense for your institution. Great, I think, right? Just, just one more. Uh, it was just, it was more about the portability. Basically, when uh, you know a, a student leaves a college, can they transfer their annotations to their own account, or is it just always tied to the LMS? Today, it is always tied to the LMS, but that is not the goal. And the, you know, in the in the roadmap, we have the the ability to take your annotations with you um, when you leave a, a course or school. Um, but we're still working on what that looks like. Right now, so I've talked about how Hypothesis works on the web. So I have a Jeremy Dean account that allows me to annotate the Washington Post uh, and you know, rant to my friends or whatever on the Washington Post. Um, but then inside that Moodle um, instance that we were playing in earlier, that's a different account from my normal Jeremy Dean account. Um, but the questioner is, is, is right that some, at some point there's gonna be some way to merge those, um, like you can merge your, not like you have a, maybe a professional Gmail account um, and a uh, and a private one, and you can you know Google makes it pretty easy to move back and forth between those across their suite of tools. That's great. Well, just, I think the next well, uh, was more of a comment than it was a question. You're getting some um, some great feedback here. One comment there, Tendi basically made the comment that you know, very versatile tool, and I wish he had it during during his dissertation research. <laughs> <laughs> me too. I gotta say, me too, man. I, I, it's a lonely thing to read those academic articles when I did my dissertation. Uh, yeah, they're confusing, um, and you, you definitely feel like, am I supposed to understand, uh, you know, uh, Derrida or whoever it is? And this is a way to really ease that, um, and, and really at any level, because that, of course, that kind of difficulty with reading can come at any level for different types of learners. And so, to realize you're not alone, to realize that you can learn from students from your classmates, they might have already trod over a question you had, and then it's there for you to kind of process through that section, or you can ask a question, somebody can respond. 
Um, it's, it's, a, it's a totally different reading experience um, and it's very powerful. And it's definitely the number one thing that students say when we survey them at the end of the semester is, you know, what did you get out of this tool? And we're like, you know, did you, did you read more closely and, and other things like that? And they consistently say they learned from their classmates was the number one thing. Um, these documents are not print printable. Um, so you have to imagine that, uh, the, again, the, going back to that layers uh, slide, this really doesn't translate back onto the page in, in an easy way. Um, so you could have, and if anybody's ever tried to print a really heavily annotated or heavily commented on Google Doc, you know, sometimes it's just sort of a miserable experience. You print your two-page paper and then there's like 10 pages of just the, the comments, you know, that are no longer near the, the reference. So it's not a great thing to, to print them out. The thing that you will be able to do is print your annotations with the reference. So what that I think is a valuable thing to be able to export and extract and then have as something that you um, that is usable to you. So that means that basically all my annotations and all the text that they are co commenting on could be extracted, popped into a Google Doc or a Word Doc, and and really be the beginning of a paper uh, that I can then you know, mold my comments and, and, and fuse them into, you know, move things around to fuse them into sensible paragraph order. And you could do that with your annotations or any annotations you have access to. So a teacher could technically extract and print out all the annotations from their course, um, maybe for a research study or maybe for, for grading purposes, although we'll have that built into the LMS app. But um, so there is an artifact that can be gained from here, but it is not like original document plus annotations. It's great. It's, looks like all the questions so far. Um, let me let me just finish up by I, I forgot to sort of do my little spiel about our pilot program. Okay. So let me let me do that for just two minutes, and then we'll see if there's other doc questions that come up. Um, so we have this pilot program. As I said, you can go ahead and go to our website and. I think there's a link at the end for, for you to be able to uh, go and it's, it's a specific Moodle link so you can go to our Moodle install guide and get the key in secret and if you're an LMS admin or a, I don't know John how it works if, if the, you, you're running the LMS for folks yeah. but so, um, so for, for folks on this panel that are uh, that are hosted by Minami it would be just a simple support uh, ticket request here to install the you know just put the LTI in so we would right. we would do it in our end. Gotcha. So then, uh, so yeah, we'll we'll I, we'll we'll have to yeah. I'll I'll make sure you guys have that information when you get those support tickets. But you can go and grab the credentials and uh, easily install it. And, and John's team will know it's it's a it's a very simple process. And then can place it in a course or or somewhere else and uh, and get started playing. Um, and again, you can you can test it out sort of for yourself and have a a, a course run it uh, for a semester or so without really ever talking to me, but we do really want folks to go into our pilot program. As you can see, it's mostly higher ed. I can't wait for a secondary school to, uh, or district to, to come in here. I know Moodle's in a lot of secondary schools. I can't wait for an international school. I know there's a lot of international Moodle users. We have some great institutions doing this. We've really designed the pilot program to be some uh, a very cool thing. As I mentioned, my background is in education. I don't wanna just have this installed for you and then uh, get a check or you know, check in at the end if you wanna write me a check. I want to be intimately involved as much as you, my team, my success team, intimately involved as much as you guys are up for it to, to collaborate on the pilot. So we offer pedagogical support. We have guides for using hypothesis in the classroom. We have advice on how to talk to, to your faculty about this. We offer ourselves, I have a success team with two other former educators um, to talk one-on-one -on -one with, with faculty about how to implement it. And obviously we'll offer uh, webinars and other things like campus visits if that's, if that's useful to folks. Um, then obviously on top of that, you know, we have the uh, technical support, um, tier one technical support. So folks in the pilot have priority in our, in our, in our support queue. Um, and uh, we also really want to build a community out of the group of, 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 of folks. So um, we want to bring together the pilot points at different conferences and possibly for what we call annotate ed events um, to talk about annotation in the classroom, to talk about piloting and what's been successful, to share best practices, um, and give our pilot schools the opportunity to test new features, obviously to give us direct feedback about what, you know, all the things that we've built have been direct from feedback from faculty, and um, it's from the pilot cohort that we're learning what's most important uh, to do next. So yeah, 
looks like there's some folks that are excited to start a pilot. Please take this back and talk to the folks that need to at, on the campus where you come from. Um, and it's really a small ask, just minimum three instructors. It'd be great if they were across the discipline. We can make it much bigger. We have bigger pilots at some schools, um, but we really just want to have you have enough evidence for you to evaluate the tool for later uh, adoption. And I, I again, the K-12 uh, individual, we don't have a, a secondary school or a K-12 district, and so it'd be super psyched to, to, uh, to work with one. Uh, my dad and I taught high school for seven, eight years. Um, I miss it. And uh, we use Moodle at my schools. <laughs> so uh, I would love to see hypothesis, hypothesis in Moodle at some uh, pre-college levels. All right. Well, everyone, thank you. This was a great session. Uh, I know that we're super excited to just expose the value of this this great application across our, our community and, and beyond. We're at the uh, U.S. Moodle Moot next week, and we'll certainly be promoting this uh, this application. It's just fantastic. So uh, thank you again. Thanks, folks. Thanks for listening, and please be in touch if I can if I can be helpful in any way.